In this video, we're going to look at the distance on the complex plane between two complex numbers. Let's choose a complex number z and a complex number w. Now they come with associated vectors. There's the vector associated with W. There's the vector associated with Z. They all are pinned, the position vectors. They're always pinned to the origin. Now, we're wanting to look, for our purposes, at Z minus W. So, minus W, the vector associated with minus W will be got from the vector associated with W by a half turn around the origin. It's a rotation of pi radians about the origin. So there's the position of negative w. And if we're wanting z minus w, then we would complete this parallelogram. z followed by minus w. That journey from there to there same as the journey from the origin out to minus w. So z, followed by minus w, will get us to the complex number z minus w. And if we look at the associated vector with that, that would be that line there. And we'll notice that if we move this line up, it's exactly the same. There's another parallelogram we've got from the origin out to Z minus W and traveling from W to Z. The distance between W and Z is exactly the same as the modulus of the complex number Z minus W. Remember, the modulus is the distance from the origin. So the modulus of the complex number Z minus W gives the distance from W to Z. Let's write that down. The modulus of Z minus W is the distance between Z and W. W and Z. The order, because it's the modulus makes not a jot of difference. I mean, the diagram looks slightly different. If we look at W followed by minus Z, there's minus Z half turn around the origin. So there's the position of negative Z on the diagram. And if we take W minus Z, W minus Z, we end up with that position there. And if we go back and look at this distance, which was the modulus of Z minus W, you can see now that it's exactly the same as the modulus of W minus Z, as it should be. 
z minus w and w minus z are the negatives of each other. We have two healthy parallelograms sitting in this diagram. And that green line is the diagonal of both of them, representing z minus w, or the other way, the arrow in the other direction, representing w minus z. And these two moduli are exactly the same as the distance from w to z. So let's just complete this also is this distance. So if you want to find the distance between two complex numbers in the complex plane, subtract them and find the modulus. Let's try an example. So find the distance between Z and W where Z is equal to 2 plus 3i and W is equal to negative 1 minus 2i. So stop the video, see how you get on. Okay, so let's have a look at the solution to that question. So the required distance is given by the modulus of z minus w. So that's the modulus of 2 plus 3i minus negative 1 minus 2i. So that's 2 plus 3i plus 1 plus 2i. And we work out the real part, which is 2 plus 1. And the imaginary part is 3i plus 2i, which is 5i. And the modulus of a complex number we know is the square root of the real part squared plus the, complex, the imaginary part squared. So it's the square root of 9 plus 25, which is the square root of 34. Now, it wouldn't have made any difference whether we did w minus z, found that uh, modulus at this stage. Any negatives that we got would just be um, wiped out by the squaring process. So we'd get exactly the same square root of 34. One last example. This time, find the distance between Z1 and negative Z2, where Z1 equals 3i and Z2 equals negative 1 plus 4i. So stop the tape, stop the video, and see how you get on with that one. OK, how did you get on with that? So required distance this time is the modulus of the difference between these two, z1 minus negative z2. So that'll be the modulus of the sum of these two vectors, uh, these two complex numbers. So we get the modulus of 3i plus negative 1 plus 4i. Now we don't need these second brackets, that's just a negative 1 plus 4i. Real part is minus 1, the imaginary part is 7i. And therefore, the modulus of that square root of the real part squared, negative 1 squared, and 
the imaginary part squared. So that's the square root of 1, positive 1, plus 49. Square root of 50. 50 being 25 times 2, it's the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, or 5 root 2 for that.